Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld series in the Cold Bog with the Cult of Jinx. It has been a while since the last video, and I apologize for that. I have talked a bit more in detail about this in the last channel update video, but for the last few weeks I have been suffering from frequent neck pain and headaches, so basically all the good stuff that you don't want to have when your work depends on sitting in front of a computer. And while it is slowly getting better, I still have the occasional day or two where I don't really get much done, so I'm sorry that you had to wait a bit longer for this episode to go up. Now, with that being said, last time we left off after an episode that focused in large parts on our latest recruit Chutney, who accompanied Maniac and Redini on another adventure for clues about the Horn of Edmo. The three of them have now returned, but the trip was apparently a bit stressful for Chutney, so he is currently spending his night on a mental break, wandering around in our storage room. Eventually he will of course snap out of it, but until then we'll have to make do without him. So despite Chutney's combat skills, he will not be able to accompany Maniac, Coco and Jackna as they clear out another bug here, because not only do we want to destroy one of the hives, we also want to get our hands on some of the valuables dropped by the dead trader here. In particular, we want to reacquire the joy wire that we sold them in the first place. However, there is one other reason why we want to clear this area of insects for the time being, and we'll get to that in just a second. For now, we can watch as our Devil Strand greenhouse is coming along nicely, and we can also have Coco and her animal handling skill of 14 take care of the wild woman that wandered in at the end of the last episode. You guys left a lot of comments about her and about her potential usefulness for our village of Liviana, and I think you have me convinced that despite her pacifist nature, she might make a good addition. And so, as we watch Redini in the background relocate our barrier a bit further away from the bug hive, Coco successfully tames colony member number 10, and I do have a few ideas about what we can do with her. First of all though, let's give her a new name, as always selected from the list of patrons in the naming rights tier and above, and the name that came up this time was Freya, after patron Freya Arbiak, a lovely Nordic name that I think fits quite well. So welcome to the colony of Liviana, although not yet to the cult of Jinx. As a matter of fact, Freya is still a believer in a cannibal cult, and that is of course not going to be tolerated. Still, since we cannot instantly convert her anyway, we might as well get started on her first big task, and that would be to plant a Gauranlin tree. Now, strictly speaking, the planting itself will be done by Coco. I think we want a fully fledged member of the Cult of Jinx to take care of this, not to mention that this should also ensure that we get another ideology development point. As you can see though, for some reason we do not, however with a quick use of the game's dev tools that is easily fixed. I normally don't like to do this, but this is very clearly a bug. I have actually tested this myself, but for some reason sometimes the points just don't show up, but because these Gauranlin trees are such an important part of our ideology, I think it is fair to use some behind the scenes magic to get things back on track. Now, in the meantime, as Freya finishes our exterior wall, we are informed that the Royal Tribute Collector has arrived, and we do in fact also still have a prisoner that we could sell them, but, well, suffice it to say that we have other plans. At this point, as you can see, our greenhouse has also been completely roofed over, except for that 5x7 Devil Strand field, of course. That field size is just one tile shy of 25% of the available interior space in this room, and that does have an interesting effect. On one hand, the area that is roofed over is now big enough that the room will maintain its interior temperature, so despite a big hole in the roof, we can still keep it warm in the winter, with a campfire for example. At the same time, that hole in the roof also ensures that our Devil Strand mushrooms always receive enough sunlight, as the light emitted from campfires, torches or Spex's solar pinhole is not enough to actually get plants to grow. So again, as long as we keep the unroofed area below 25% of the entire interior space, then we still create a room that will not immediately equalize temperatures with the outside. During the summer, that is admittedly not too much of a concern, but as you know, in the cold bog, the winter arrives suddenly and fearfully. Now, after an evening spent in meditation, with Chutney and Freya now also joining the party, another night sets across the swamp, and on the next morning, we are starting things off with another ritual. From last episode's adventures, we are still housing a prisoner, and I think it's time that we punish them adequately, not to mention that this should also serve as a nice way to show Freya what she's gotten herself into. 
And so, as the entire colony assembles and Spex takes another life, we finish a spectacular execution, providing us with another ideology development point and our colonists, including Freya, with a healthy mood bonus. And speaking of Freya, we will now continue right with the next ritual, this time focused on her, as the entire Cult of Jinx will now assemble to watch Freya connect with her Garanlin tree. The ritual itself, however, does have a slightly different tone to it. That is definitely something that our colonists should talk to Freya about. In the meantime, though, the most important thing is that she does in fact get the connection going, and that we can now have her raise some claw dryads. The idea behind all of this is to eventually turn Freya into a plant specialist, I think her plant skill of 9 lends itself pretty well to that, and if possible, I actually want her to maintain two Gauranlin trees simultaneously. That way, she could raise up to 8 of these claw dryads, and while they are pretty flimsy individually, in those numbers they need to be respected, and that would also be a great way to work around Freya's pacifist nature. Additionally, we could also make her a Psycaster, but let's take things one step at a time. In the meantime, you have maybe noticed it already, we are creating a small temple inside of our greenhouse, because let's be honest, where else would the Cult of Jinx realistically want to meet? And this gives us the bonus of being able to install a few beauty items to boost the room's impressiveness, which does in fact help the success chance of a number of rituals. Shortly after then, the Cult of Jinx unlocks the secrets of beer brewing, and with that, I think we have now also reached the end of what we want to research in this first stage of the series. Like I've said, my plan for this first chapter of the series is to remain completely Neolithic, as far as that is possible, and primarily that includes not researching any technology deemed industrial or higher. So while we do still have a few things that we could theoretically research here, I don't think that anything except for maybe long blades makes a lot of sense. Drug production then is already an industrial tech and therefore sort of marks the border of how far we can go. Again, we'll have to see how well that works in practice. The fact that mechanoids are disabled in this playthrough maybe makes things at least a little bit easier, but as soon as the first large horde with guns shows up, we might have to rethink this approach. Meanwhile, our small Church of Jinx is done, but only receives a dull impressiveness rating, but maybe we can boost that a bit with the help of a slightly more beautiful sculpture. Just in that moment, Bex also receives a shooting inspiration, but before she gets to use it, it is time for the next ritual, as the room is now indeed deemed slightly impressive. And that rating is actually important for the upcoming conversion ritual, because we do of course want to make Freya a member of the Cult of Jinx as quickly as possible. And so, Redini attempts to convert her to our ways in the darkness, perhaps not the best approach, but maybe it also adds to the graveness of the situation. In any case, shortly after we fail a thrombo hunting quest in the background for not completing it fast enough, we do in fact complete an effective conversion ritual, and that means we obtain another ideology development point, and Freya's beliefs take a massive hit. That is not enough though, as we can now also use Redini's convertibility to remove another 16%, and just like that, Freya suddenly no longer seems all that certain in her old ways. Unfortunately, it will now take 3 days until we can use the ability again, but still, I am not a fan of abusing the imprisonment system for this. Freya has not done anything to anger the Cult of Jinx just yet. In fact, she has integrated herself quite well and did not suffer a mental break, despite her mood being extremely low in the first few hours. So, from a story perspective, I don't think that putting her in jail is the right move at this moment. Now, as the sun rises again, the bug hive is also once again getting busy. But before we start hunting insects, we are sending out a five-person squad consisting of Spex, Maniac, Took, Chutney and Jekna, as a mega sloth has appeared to the south of our village, and so our best shooters can get some target practice. Shortly after then, we assemble everyone by the river and start taking out the bugs, and as you can see, with this much firepower and the occasional Verigo Pulse, this is not too difficult. Th 
Thoraya can then take care of the hive and we are also hauling some insect jelly back to the base. The insects are unfortunately slowly but steadily destroying their surroundings and so we no longer have an enclosed storage space over here. Following that, it is now time for Chutney's Tree Torment. I think he has more than earned his ritual scar. And we even have some special ritual music to accompany this, as Eric Murray sent me a self-composed song titled The Scarring of Jinx, which I think we are going to make our official music at least for the Tree Torment, but if you like it, then perhaps even for all the other rituals as well. And there we go, a satisfying tree torment lies behind us and everyone receives a small plus one mood bonus, while Chutney has earned himself the official Cult of Jinx ritual scar on his head, let us hope that he wears it proud. The rest of the day is then spent in meditation, I think with four participants we should be able to get the next Psy rank unlocked pretty quickly, although I have not yet completely made up my mind on who to use it on. The next few hours then remain largely uneventful and so we can already skip ahead to the next morning, where we can see our bears haul large quantities of insect jelly back to the village, otherwise they would shortly deteriorate if we left them near the hive. We are also constructing a handful of drums inside of our temple, after all we can have a drum ritual as well, and at this stage I think we should make use of any way to obtain more ideology development points. Around noon then we can watch a small hunting party kill a warg for some meat and wolf skin, and while we're here we might as well top up our meat supply with some does. A few hours later then we can watch as some of our colonists start constructing a small firing range. Located right next to the river this will give great cover against incoming enemies, and I fear that we'll meet some of those sooner rather than later. Before we do though, Jekna finishes a masterwork marble sculpture, this one representing a grizzly bear staggering through a field and sweating uncontrollably. This of course relates to the great grizzly bear plague that we had I believe in the second to last episode, and with that imagery now immortalized in stone we can move the sculpture into our temple. Together with the one already in there we are now up to a very impressive rating. And that already brings us to the next night and shortly after to the next morning, which begins with a rare task for Maniac, digging for some steel. So far we have built most of our utilities and buildings from woods and we will continue doing that, however when it comes to defenses we probably can't afford to make compromises. So this steel will likely be used exclusively for the construction of deadfall traps, of which we currently have alarmingly few. We are also constructing two marble slab beds today for those two colonists who are still sleeping in bedrolls, as both Chutney and Freya have earned themselves something better. In Freya's case she probably won't even like the slab bed in the beginning, but I think it's never too early to train her in what it means to be a member of the Cult of Jinx. As you can see we are also constructing her a small shack next to our temple, not because we want to have her out of the way, but because building space in the main village is slowly running out, so the expansion across the river was inevitable. We'll have to see what this does with her greedy trait though and whether or not we can keep her mood in check, but I definitely do not want to have her sleep inside of our temple long term. A few hours later, Spex's Medicine Maker Dryad also finally hatches, and named after patron supporter Kyle Manley, it will now receive the name Kyle. Kyle will remain our only Medicine Maker Dryad for the time being, the previous batch of two has shown us that that is likely going to be enough. Down south meanwhile then, as advertised, we are getting some deadfall traps constructed. Yes, if we remain Neolithic the steel will at some point run out, but if we really only use it for traps and the occasional visage mask, I think it will last us for quite some time. In the evening then, an eclipse sets in that makes an already dark swamp even darker, while Jackna finishes another marble sculpture, this time however only of normal quality. The image here depicts maniacs laying a Fenrir, referring to the events of the last episode, and interestingly enough it is described as contrasting terrorism with contemplation. 
So if any of your artists out there want to try your hands at that, or the previous one, then by all means go ahead and feel free. And while we're on it, for the talented contributors among you, I am actually also currently debating whether or not to install the Interaction Bubbles mod. For those of you that don't know it, this mod basically makes the interactions between characters show up on screen, so we would get small, well, interaction bubbles telling us what the characters in our colony actually talk about. In the comments, this has been one of the most frequent mod requests over the last few episodes, but before installing it, I would like to hear what all of you think about it. It can at times clutter the screen a bit, I feel, but I can of course also understand that it would be a huge help for those of you who try to create artwork for this series. Now, with Freya's certainty reduced even further, I am afraid we have reached the point to make the cut for today. I can already feel my headaches getting worse again, and I would prefer not to spend the rest of my weekend in bed. So after an extra long episode 18, we'll keep episode 19 a few minutes shorter than usual and transition over to some fan art. Once again accompanied by our official Cult of Jinx theme, today we have another piece from Tony Murchison, this time showing the village of Liviana in all of its swampy beauty. To be honest, it looks almost cozy, but then again, I am not entirely sure if I would want to spend my days living among Spex and her companions. Now, if you also have some fan art to send me, then the best way to do that is by sending me an email to pete at petecomplete.com. Perhaps some of you want to try to capture one of Jackna's two sculptures. Also, especially if you want to make some artwork, or already have, please let me know if the Interaction Bubbles mod would help you. If the majority is in favor of installing that, I will gladly do so for the next episode. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.